The next video I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at doing a Yeti mug. These are really good quality mugs. Everybody wants them. I don't think I go uh, at least a week without hearing somebody that wants to etch these. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, pretty similar to what we've just done. Uh, some of them come with handles, some of them don't come with handles. This one doesn't have a handle. Um, but the unique thing about the Yetis is they always have writing at the bottom and they have a, a basically a, you know, a raised uh, Yeti image on the back here. And typically what a lot of people want to do is they want to get their logos matched up you know, with, with the Yeti symbol. Now on this mug, it's actually quite easy because I've got Yeti here and then 90 degree or 180 degrees on the other side is, is the other Yeti. So I can actually use that, uh, uh, those four lineup and I'm going to show you how to do that because um, the problem with something like this is, you know, if, you, if you're trying to line up with, uh, with the main, uh, with the logo right here, uh, you want to have perfect placement every time. You want to be able to stick it in and then press the button and then off you go. So we're going to show you how to do that. Uh, quite simple. Um, I'll probably just line up with, with the Yeti part here, which is quite nice. And again, you can see that, um, you know, when you go through these Yetis, you get a nice, you typically get a pretty good silver finish on the back. I normally just etch it, etch through one pass and then I use a magic, uh, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser to clean it up. Uh, that certainly seems to work pretty good for for most of these applications again this this Yeti is a powdered uh, mug uh, and again um, we'll etch it the same way we did the two-handled uh, mug in the previous video just like the uh, when we did the the wine glass um, I'm actually going to to make a mark here in the middle and I'm going to use the the red dot pointer to uh, to locate this um, and I'm going to do both sides so again you know I've got I've got basically transfer tape on, on both sides. Um, I'm not going to use the transfer tape. I'm just going to use it for locating and then when I'm ready to go, I'm just gonna basically going to take it off. Now what I want to do on here is I actually want to, halfway is sort of in between the E and the T here on the Yeti and the same thing on the back here. So all I really need to do on here is to sort of go up from here and then just pick a, a center point. So that. That black mark there is in, in line basically with the E and the T, okay? And I can do the same thing on the back side. Here's the E and T, and I'm gonna put a mark right there, okay? That's sort of in the middle here. Uh, my logo is gonna go here, and my other logo is gonna go here. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll put a logo here, and I'll put some text on the other side. That probably will, will, will be easy, because then I can give this mug to my wife, and she'll be happy. So for this example on the Yeti mug, I'm actually going to do a, a photo uh, and some text. Um, that way I can give it to my wife and she'll be happy because we have a lab and, and the lab's name will be on the back. So that works really well. Anyways, I'm working in photo paint. Uh, typically, uh, I work in photo paint when I want to get rid of the background. I'm going to need to knock out the white background here because um, I'm going to need to invert the image. And typically, I like to do that in photo paint. Um, so I'm going to do the setup here and then bring the image into Corel and then send it over to the laser machine. So first thing I want to do is I want to crop out what I want on the dog and I want basically the face and a bit of the neck and let's do that, double click and now I've got the image and I'm set for the image that I want. I'm going to go up to image, cut out lab. I can do this pretty quick because it's just a white background. So it's going to, it's going to, software is going to be sophisticated enough to do that quickly. So I've done a trace out here. Uh, and now I want to do a fill. The fill is reflective of the area that I want to keep, which in this case is the, the picture of the, uh, of the dog. Uh, I'm going to say preview. And you can see that it's pretty well just got rid of the white. I just need to add a little bit in here for the, and say okay and there I've got my transparent background transparent background is important because when I invert this I don't want the background to go black I want it to stay white uh, which it will do with the transparent background um, let's just check the uh, image size here to make sure this is a little bit too big so I'm going to down sample this uh, the image size that dance is going to make it a bit smaller uh, let's go to um, 
let's go to 2.5 inches and that should be pretty that's 2.5 yeah that should be good let's make it three Heck. again that's about three by three square and then let's let's bump up the resolution here to uh, let's go to 150 on any alias so I'm turn that off and there's my image there so again image is sized for what I want to etch it at that's very important as I pointed out in previous videos uh, next thing I'm going to do is I want to go in here and I just want to lighten this image up a little bit a bit too much black in here I'm going to use the tonal curve to do this um, so I'm going to let's just bring this up here like so I'm going to force a little bit more white into the image that's good and I'm going to go down to the effects I'm going to unsharp mask this I want this to be that's good there Increase the radius just a little bit. There we go. And I need to um, basically invert the image. Now, sometimes what people will suggest, and normally what I've suggested, if you may want to take this one step further um, and then go into the image and then convert it to black and white. Uh, no, I don't want to flatten this. Uh, and again, you can see it's pretty well similar to... to um, you know, if I go to the Jarvis method here, it's pretty similar to what it was. So I could have probably almost left that without even doing the conversion, uh, but I will do it. Um, and you can see that uh, I've got the checkerboard pattern there on the back. So when I invert it, it basically will be good to go. Um, but I'll go back one step. I really just can leave it like that. That's good enough for me. I'm going to save the job. And let's call it lab. Sure, I'm going to overwrite it. And then we're going to go into Corel. And I'm going to import the logo. I'm going to go back up to my area here to, to get my lab. And there's the image there. And again, you can see the size reflects what I sized it out in PhotoPaint. So really all I need to do now is just send that off to the, to the etcher. And all I need to do before I send it over is one step now is to transform and invert it. And notice how because this is transparent, the background stays white, which is what I want it to do. Okay. And then I'm going to go file print. I'm going to set the you know, rotary on here. It's going to, let's put, go by 12 by 12. That's good enough. I'm going to minimize the job size. And those power and speed should be good. 500 dpi is good. There's the image there. Remember, the image is only going to be the size of the dock. Okay. And now if I go into job control. So now if I go into job control, I can grab my image here and I can bring it out. And there's a dog's head right there. Okay. So I'll move that. All I really need to do here, uh, my next step, is to put my text in here. So let's take this, uh, rid of this, and yeah, let's go capitals. And I'll make that a bit bigger. That's pretty good there. Maybe you want a little bit more descriptive text. Maybe more like a puppy bellies. <laughs> and that should be pretty good there. Let's just uh, spread that out a little bit. And then I'm going to print that over. Again, minimize the job size, print, 
And then if I go into job control, there's my text there and it's ready to go. Okay, so I've got all my jobs ready to go. Now I need to just go over and set up with the laser machine, uh, get that going, and then we'll position the, the text. So now in job control, uh, now what I have to do is I need to get the Yeti mug into the rotary attachment. And the first thing I need to know is what the diameter of the mug is. The diameter I measured is three inches, so I need to activate the rotary attachment and place in the, the diameter is three inches. So I'm gonna go to settings, options, accessory, and I'm going to activate the rotary. I want a three inch diameter and I want to return to start position. And that's very important for doing the Yeti mugs. Say, okay. And my rotary attachment's active and there's my pointer there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over, let's get the Rotary attachment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that picture. What I want to do is put the picture here and put the text of the dog on the back here. I'm going to put this in. I've taken the lid off. Place this in here and make sure that's in there good. And here's my pointer here. So again, as I mentioned before, I'm going to set this as a middle point. So what I want to do in that case is I want to bring the head down a little bit so you can see on the screen here I'm bringing the head down and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the mug I'm just holding this and I'm going to bring this up here and this is going to be for position turn that to there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab my <coughs> dog's head here. I'm going to bring it out. And it's going to snap. Oops. And it's in the middle. Now, if it wasn't in the middle, I could turn. I could bring this down a little bit more. Okay, so the head's down a little bit more, which then allows me to turn this by hand a little bit more. So I've turned that back. I'm lined up with the point. And I can move this down a little bit more. And again, there's a, you know, it's a snap there. So I get a little bit of space here, but that's fine. Um, and then what I want to do is then I want to bring the mug around. And as I mentioned, don't worry about this way because it's, it's still in line with the, with the image on the backside. I just want to make sure that I'm good this way. So I want to make sure I'm lined up with the red or the black dot here over the red dot pointer. And again, that's where I'm going to put my text. I'm going to grab my text here. And I'm going to snap this over. Now, like I said before, when we were doing this, um, if you were going to do this as a, as a setup all the time, then typically what I do is I put an F8 there. Um, and then what I would do is I would come back here and press this button to go back to the position here and I would put an F8 there and you notice here that this F8 here allows me to snap that logo there so if I'm doing these Yeti mugs on all the time then I typically want these markers here because once I establish my start position which I'll show you I don't I don't all I have to really save is these set points right here and as I mentioned before I could come in here and save this you know, and I could save this as, uh, you know, a three inch round Yeti and say, okay. And I could close this job right down and I can open that job back up again. And there's everything ready to go. So everything is in the, in the proper position. Um, and then when I want to go do it again, all I really need to do is, is I don't even need these. I, I'll just have a, a placement image here if I want. But I've got my, my set points right here. I just need to bring out my new logos and my new text and snap it to here. I don't need to put in the, 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 the transfer tape or anything like that. Everything's going to be lined up. Now, here's the critical point you got to remember. Okay, I need to be able to line this up because 
if I don't have these, if I don't want to spend the time of putting transfer tape on here and the black mark and lining everything up, I need to have some place to line up. So when I put the next one in, I can just do a visual lineup. And the way I do this typically is I put this over here right between the E and the T, which is where it is right now. So you can see the red dot pointer is between the E and the T. And that's really, really important because what's going to happen now, the job's going to get done and it's going to go back to that position. When I put the next one in, I'll use the red dot pointer to line up between the E and the T. Okay, and you can see that on the screen, the, the, uh, the crosshairs are off the, the image and it doesn't affect where the, the, the crosshairs don't affect where I'm engraving. Where I'm engraving is where the, tech, where the images are. So don't worry about it, it's here. This is my start position. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the transfer tape because I don't need that on anymore. And if I spin this around, I'll just take off this one here too. And remember, you don't really even have to have transfer tape on once you get this all set up. So I can go back to my starting point, which is right here, which is between the E and the T, okay? So that's where I'm gonna start, okay? And if you want, you can put an F8 button there too, if you just wanna have it as a visual so that you can say, well, that, that one there is my startup point. And again, you can save that with the job. So really all I have to do now is I'm ready to go, okay? So all I need to do is to run the job. Let's make sure my power and speeds are set good. Uh, let's run this down at 50. So all I need to do now is just basically hit the run button and then off I go. So you see I can be going through the actual process here um, and just running the job. And the important thing here is to always have a process when you're doing the lasering. Okay, it's always important that we think about this. We think about where the mugs are going to go in relationship, uh, the, sorry, where the image is going to go on the mug in relationship to the word Yeti. Because once I've done my first mug setup and I'm happy with, uh, with the location of the logos and everything like that, I just save that as a template and I never really have to do anything else. The next time I do this mug, I just have to snap my logos to the two uh, F8 uh, markers there on the job and I'm ready to go. It takes two seconds to get the job going. And as I mentioned, this job is not sped up. This is speed as is. Um, and you can see on the screen that the, the job timing is four and a half minutes. It's a relatively large coverage for the, for the mug.
They're almost done the job. The information's been parsed over. is going back and you notice that the red dot pointer is back between the E and the T so the next time I go to do the job all I really need to do is if this was sort of a new job I can take it out and then all I really do is put this back in again and then I turn this and I line that red dot pointer up in between the, the E and the T lock it in and then off I go really really simple and this takes all the guesswork out of having to do a logo and everything and again I can't impress on how important this is because you can't make mistakes on these mugs they're just way too expensive to start fooling around and making mistakes and guessing and everything like this this is this is so simple in and out in and out in and out and if it's just the same thing it's in and out you're pressing the repeat button right here and this will just basically activate the, the mug uh, the job again for you Okay, so remember, always save the jobs, and it'll be so much easier for you. Well, there you go. There's the Yeti mug engraved with a picture and the text on the back. Now, again, you have a little bit of um, residue on here. Normally, what I typically do on that um, is I'll just, again, take my wet uh, magic eraser, and then I'll just scrub a little bit on it. And I'll do the back side, same thing. So, not it done this way. And then we can dry it off. In my pants. <laughs> and now, my hopefully my wife will be happy with something like that. Okay, very quick, very easy. Um, again, um, something that... Um, as I mentioned, the process is so important on this. Well, there you have it. Pretty simple exercise on how to do a Yeti mug. Um, again, a lot of people, you know, are always a little bit hesitant about using mugs like this because of the expense of them. Okay, so you have to be very careful to make sure that when you do an image on here, you're hitting it every time. You can't have issues where you're guessing and, and uh, you wanna make sure you're perfect and you're not making any mistakes. Um, you can see that the secret to this is just that one little step of this being your start point and you get it lined up perfectly. Every time I put a mug in there, it's perfect. Okay, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, if I want to do the same job in six months, I just pull up my template file that I did and off I go. I don't have to do any more setup. I don't have to do any pre-mask on here or anything like that. Everything is perfect. Okay, so that's why you really sometimes you have to think about the job, look at the job and say, you know, how can I make it easy so that when I put that mug in, it's always in the same spot? It's great with the Yetis because, you know, everything's stamped right there. I could have even used this side here as my starting point. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, and again, always look at what you're doing when it comes to a round item uh, and always establish a starting point. Remember on our mug here, I touched the back of the, 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 the uh, lens assembly. Okay, and that's my starting point. So again, and, uh, you know, that's simple. Um, you know, you may look, you know, I, I've done other items, you know, I look for poor lines. I've looked for little marks, you know, maybe they've already got a logo on there. Maybe I'll match up to the logo. But it's very, very important that you have a starting point that you can reference. So when you put the next one in, it's just you visually line up and you hit the repeat button or you doing if it's a new if it's a new setup or you're changing text or whatever then you just hit the run button and, and you know it's going to be right in the right spot because you can't be forking out 50 or 60 or 70 dollars on a mug like this because you made a mistake because you weren't you didn't set it up properly okay so that's very very important that you set these things up straight and easy so that the next time you put one in it's always in the same spot very very critical and once you learn that technique 
so much easier to do your jobs.